This is CNN. She's from Nigeria. He's from Uganda. So when he got to see the tapes, he's like, wow, we used to do this, you know, in Nigeria. And he thought, hmm, how we could do a lot together. A chance meeting in Canada became a partnership to build what is now a budding media empire and a loving marriage. When she came on board with uh, the passion that she had, the skills, the talent and so on, that really helped to uh, even crystallize the vision. You're watching Fire Africa Television. This week on African Voices, meet Patricia and Moses Mawa, the power couple who bring African culture to Canada through media. At their office in Toronto, Canada, Moses and Patricia Mawa are in a meeting with members of their staff to go over ideas for their magazines. I would really appreciate it if you guys could come up with ideas for stories, particularly for diversity, because this is one of the most complex publications to put out. The magazines are part of what is created at Silver Trust Media, a marketing communications firm run by the Mawas. Or a million dollars in the bank account. With a staff of only 10 full time employees, the company manages two television programs and three magazines. It also handles production and marketing for clients that range from local business to international embassies. There are really three key areas that are part of it. Uh, the first one is, of course, the Planet Africa uh, brand. Where with that, we have uh, the television program, we have the magazine, and we have the awards uh, program. Um, the second brand that is actually really also very dear to my heart is actually our diversity brand. It's also um, referred to as our Harmony sort of project. And with that, at this moment, we have uh, you know, Diversity Magazine. It is actually one of the most widely distributed publications in Canada. The third part, which is, I think, also very profound, is uh, it's our uh, Destiny brand. We have Destiny Magazine at this moment. Uh, television, we, in 2005, actually, we launched a program called uh, uh, Destiny Television. And it actually profiles and features uh, faith-related uh, Christian sort of content. One and go. You're watching Fire Africa Television. Patricia Mawa is not only her husband's partner in all of this, but she is also the host of Planet Africa, a weekly program that focuses on African culture and current affairs. So you won't see us featuring things like, uh, you know, war, poverty. We, we, we talk about those things, but from a positive way, because I think we get enough of that. Um, if you live in this part of the world, I'm sure you're sick and tired of seeing all these negative things about Africa. So we try to inspire our people and also to showcase things that people will not ordinarily see about Africa. Now, I have Louisa here. Louisa is the image consultant that helps. The show is broadcast in Canada and syndicated in Europe and parts of Africa. Launched in 2002, it was the first major project for the company. It's also something neither of the Mawas thought they would be doing when they were growing up in their respective African countries. I am originally from Nigeria and I grew up there uh, with uh, a sister and two brothers and my childhood was very interesting uh, because I, I think um, a lot of my childhood was defined by some of the things that I had to go through in school. Um, the bullying and, you know, uh, kids making fun of me and all that. Started making fun of me for being too thin. So that was like um, what really affected me so badly. I didn't want to go to school at that time of my life. I just wanted to stay home. But then I remember um, there was a time I, um, we were given an assignment and I did very well. And the teacher said to the rest of the class, go ask Patricia to tell you how to do this. And I remember my bullies came and were kind of asking me, oh, could you tell us how to do this? And um, I kind of liked the way it felt for everyone to come around me. So I learned one thing. I learned that if you um, do good work, it doesn't matter if people like you or not, they will come around you. So that 
was like a, a time in my life when things changed. I began to work very hard, and I think that has continued up till now. The, the, the work ethic that I have comes from that period of my life. The early part of my life was uh, spent uh, primarily in Uganda. My background is uh, such that my father um, uh, was Uganda and uh, my mother being Sudanese. And uh, so the two countries actually helped to give me um, a unique background of diversity because uh, um, my mother having come from the Sudan and my father from Uganda, it kind of gave uh, a unique picture and uh, it was quite interesting because uh, culturally and in terms of how to relate, how to do things, and so on, that kind of helped to, um, to inform me in terms of how, how to, uh, uh, in terms of the person that I've been actually become. I think my, you know, career in the media was the divine orchestration. After my university, I went to um, do what we call the National Youth Service Corps in Nigeria. So it's like a one-year um, service to your nation so you're not quite paid but you're kind of like um, you know doing I, I just call it like a co-op like what we will call co-op here in, in this part of the world so while I was doing that um, I was supposed to be posted to work in the government house because I studied political science and I was cool with that but then they made a mistake so they mistakenly posted me to the TV station and this place had a TV station, a radio station, and all that. So then they were going to change it. I'm like, oh, wait, sorry, we made a mistake. I said, actually, no, you didn't make a mistake. I actually have some experience. So you see, God just kind of kept on pushing me towards this path. Um, similar to what Patricia said, um, my background, as far as I was concerned, my journey was heading towards a different direction. Um, because uh, while I was back home in Uganda and then to the, in the Sudan as well, uh, I was in business. I was a young person, a teenager, involved with uh, um, uh, mostly produce. And um, I think that was one of the unique things that gave me business um, sort of understanding and how best the things can actually get to happen. But when I came to Canada, um, I figured that it was not going to be possible to sell corn and supply, you know, and things like that. So I needed actually to do something rather different. And uh, I decided actually to, re to enroll at university, that's Carlton University in Ottawa. Um, so I did film studies. So my background is film, actually. I got a BA in film studies and uh, then took interest in other things as well that I thought were quite interesting that uh, I liked, including photography and, and then went on to do technical stuff like editing and so on. Um, so when I gained that much experience in production and related sort of things, I thought that, wow, uh, this is great. But instead of actually stepping into the world uh, looking for employment and so on, why don't I just create one for myself? and then find like-minded people that could actually come on board as well and just work. I was staying with this family from my country who were just, you know, uh, letting me stay for a few days before I found my own place. And they said, actually, there's this guy called Moses you should meet. So I'm like, wow, this Moses guy. So then um, I went to see him in his office. And I mean, I went, he was so busy. He would, I was talking and he was just doing his stuff. And I was like, wow. This man doesn't know that a beautiful guy just walked in. <laughs> but he was not, he was not. And I said, look, um, I'm looking for an opportunity while I'm actually going to school to do something. And he said, I'm not hiring. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so anyways, um, we uh, actually, I, I, I came back to meet him uh, some other time. And um, I think he, he, he got really uh, interested when he saw my, my tapes because I, I, I wanted to, him to convert the tapes of shows I was doing in Nigeria to NTSC so I could show it to the family I was staying with. So when he got to see the tapes, it's like, wow, you used to do this, you know, in Nigeria? And he thought, hmm, we could do a lot together. Patricia and Moses became close friends once they joined forces, and the friendship grew into romantic relationships. Together, they would have to endure some tough times before tasting success. None of our friends knew that we were going through this. This is going to be a surprise to all our friends. I'm Aisha Sasei in Atlanta, and this is CNN. Hey, Yaman. Yay. Moses and Patricia Mawa have been married more than 10 years and have three children. The success of their company, Silver Trust Media, 
has afforded them the chance to give their children opportunities they didn't have when they arrived in Canada. The interesting thing is that uh, when I took the flight from Nairobi in Kenya, uh, because that's where I actually came directly from, uh, to Canada, uh, when I arrived in the country, I had only $20 in my pocket. And uh, with uh, $20, obviously, you can't do much. And um, I was lucky because I met uh, a couple of individuals who, uh, one of them was actually Senator um, Donald Oliver. He was a member of the Senate of Canada, uh, who basically uh, helped me out, gave me his business card, and sent me to Royal Bank, you know, uh, one of the managers there, uh, who then um, in, enrolled me into a program uh, that was actually for young entrepreneurs, you know. So that's how I decided to actually register my business. I got my first, you know, bank account for the business, you know, with a bank and got some sort of uh, financing. Uh, not too much at the time, just $3,000, you know, plus my $20 that I brought from Africa. <laughs> you know, so I guess $3,020, right? And that's what has actually grown to where it is, you know, at the moment. The first time we sent a demo to um, a few stations, we just, everybody said no. <laughs> But we didn't give up, so we went back and said, okay, um, no means we don't like it or we want it differently or not now. I think one of the reasons why uh, we were denied initially the opportunity to launch a television program that would serve the interests of the African diaspora uh, was uh, the fact that the expectation was rather low in regards to uh, businesses and organizations and so on who would be there to advertise on the program. So what we did was uh, to really research um, and uh, identify the right kinds of uh, uh, you know, potential advertisers or sponsors. And thankfully, so many of them came actually on board. And uh, even ahead of time, you know, committed to advertising. We've got we got lawyers and people who owned, you know, community stores and uh, uh, so many other professionals also. The other thing that we also got to do was to um, make sure that our uh, television programs and eventually the publications uh, that they were not just um, you know programs that uh, were limited to the specific continental African community, but to make it a little bit broader. And, uh, you know, th that really helped also to get uh, support from communities that are even outside who actually saw that, okay, there's uh, potential in regards to a market within the community and so much more. I've heard so much about you. Oh, no, you watch the show? <laughs> yes, I do. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're here with your family. We're taking you to the salon to give you a nice hair. I think yeah, our story is a, a story of, you know, people who um, did not have too much they say to, to he who much is given, much is expected. But us is the other way around. Not too much was given, but much is expected. And I think that's what makes a lot of uh, people in Africa, um, you know, very, very unique. Because not too much is given, but much is expected and we deliver. You know, he came here with $20. I didn't come from a rich home but we focused on where we're going not where we came from when we got married at some point we had to live in our car none of our friends knew that we're going through this we refused to take this is actually we, cnn breaking we, news we refused we've never shared known. this this is going to be a surprise to all our friends even my mother will be hearing this on cnn that we lived in our car newlyweds living in the car you know we came from the nice hotel in ottawa um, had a wedding, but we had nowhere to live uh, for, for a little bit after, you know, our wedding and for, for some time. We, but we had an office. We had a nice office because we knew that we were going somewhere and this business was important and we focused on, on the things that we needed to do. And there were times when we, you know, slept on that office floor and prayed together and came up with ideas, ideas that we knew was going to change the world. And um, I, I tell you, it's not where you are today that matters. It's where you're going. And I think that's what, you know, we, 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 should, we should focus on. You know, the most important thing about our lives is that I think success is not doing one big thing. Success is doing a number of little things excellently. And all those little things that you do come together 
and that's when you become successful. But if you're looking for that big break, I mean, when we were going through this, we could have lived in the government housing. We said no. Um, when I, I left school, I was on welfare at some point, receiving government assistance. One day, you know, I just, we, we just said, this government assistance is a distraction. Maybe if we knew that this money is not coming, we will work harder. So we just wrote to the government. I remember that my caseworker said, are you sure? Do you have a job now? I'm like, no. She said, why don't you continue taking the government assistance? We said no. We made up our minds that we will never receive government assistance. And we haven't. When business is tough, we won't say, oh, business is tough. Maybe we should go back on welfare. No. We just find another way to make it work. And I think this is something that I think should inspire a lot of, especially immigrants out there. When you come into a country like Canada or the United States or uh, you know, the UK, the government assistance is there, but it's a distraction if you ask me. If you knew that that money is not coming, you will find something to do. So I said to people out there, um, focus on where you're going and find the steps to get there. If the goal seems impossible, then change the way to get there. And that's what we've done over the years. We've come up with creative ideas to make things happen. And, and when you are focused on where you're going and you have faith in God, and you have the, the tenacity and uh, purpose, you will definitely get there. After all of their hard work and sacrifices, the Mawas say they found it rewarding to see Planet Africa on the air. They weren't yet satisfied and had plans for so much more. I'm Sarah Seidner in Jerusalem, and this is CNN. For the past nine years, Moses and Patricia Mawa have planned and produced the Planet Africa Awards Gala in Toronto, Canada. It's a glitzy affair that recognizes people of African descent for the contributions to the community. The most profound moment for me, you know, was the fact that um, we, at one particular time, had a television program on air. And then we had the magazine published. And then the third component, which is the awards program, it was actually successfully held. So having these uh, three things uh, in one year successfully was really, really wonderful. The, the first award show was interesting. Uh, you know, Moses is very ambitious. He said, we're gonna, we just had a baby, just moved to Toronto from Ottawa. Less than, you know, three months after that, he said, we're going to have... I, I think we should have an award show this year and I'm like no we just had a baby and all those things and it's like it's possible you know he's preached this possible sermon and I obliged so okay let's do it and um, we we just tapped into relationships that we had built over the years um, you know and people came out to really support it I accept this award on behalf of my family and the award show has become you know one of the um, the events that you know people look forward to again Congratulations to both Patricia and Moses on their Diamond Jubilee Award. Community involvement is important to the Mawas. They have received numerous awards for their community service and have made public outreach a part of their business model. One of the most important things that's very dear to my heart is uh, what eventually we named the Crossover Mentorship Program. Uh, this is a youth uh, mentorship initiative and it also um, involves mentoring not just youth but uh, women and, and, and some guys as well because uh, for us, um, you know, the idea of uh, having knowledge and ideas and uh, good things uh, and enabling other people who really need to grow uh, to achieve their, their destinies and so on, it's, uh, it's very profound, it's very important for us. One of the things that I really admire in him is his love for people, for the community, to make a difference. Uh, when he just came, you know, to Canada, he wrote down a list of things that he wanted to, to do. Um, and I tell you, some of the things that we're doing now are things that he had written on that piece of paper, like probably, I don't know how many, 20, 15, 20 years ago, he wanted to have um, a TV, you know, uh, not just a TV show, but a TV station, um, a magazine, you know, and all that kind of stuff to inspire the community, to empower people. Uh, and you see, one of the, uh, I think, amazing things about what we've, we've been involved with doing is that uh, we've, we would not have come this far if it were just, you know, two of the two of us. 
Uh, we've had some amazing people who have worked with us, you know, whether it's on the creative side or uh, perhaps on the business side of things and so on. So we are, um, you know, continually also tapping ideas, you know, the best things that would help us to succeed because uh, the, the success would be ultimately for uh, every one of the people, uh, each person that is actually involved within. Indeed, we had so many, I, like when I actually came in uh, into Canada, the ideas that I had in place, the goals that I wanted to achieve as part of my personal sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, aspirations were indeed so many, uh, almost all of them have been checked. Uh, but there are unique dimensions of the same thing. Like, for example, you know, uh, producing a television program is not enough. You know, it's possible to have a channel. Uh, and potentially having a channel may not be enough. It may be appropriate to have multiple, um, you know, and potentially also having a platform that, that, that may be, you know, a possibility as well. Uh, but I think, um, you know, my personal desire is to make sure that in the three key areas where we are involved, um, you know, well, with doing things which I call a Trinity vision, really destiny, diversity, and planet Africa. We want to do as much as possible to help transform lives for people to become better. So anything that's possible that will enable us to achieve that, it's fair game. For me, um, I measure our success by, you know, um, the impact that we're making. And I think that there's more impact that we need to make. Um, not just in Canada, but internationally. So my dream is to, you know, um, have uh, programs and magazines in all the countries of the world. That's ambitious, but it's it's getting there. Um, right now, a TV show airs on satellite in the UK. In fact, we get calls from Finland, from, you know, so um, it's in Europe, um, it's in Africa, but not all over Africa yet. So we want to achieve that goal of having our magazines and our TV shows you know, across um, the continent, uh, in the Caribbean and in other parts of the world. Dream of owning or Moses and Patricia Mawa have many ambitious goals for their company's future. But that's been the case since the two started their entrepreneurial journey together. According to Moses, as long as they keep the same attitude they've had since the days they were sleeping in their car and on the floor of their office, there is nothing they can't uh, accomplish. That is really if your attitude is really high up and you are focused on doing something and you really feel within your guts that this is what you want to do and you know that it is possible and you add faith to that, you know, and your faith actually propels you. Um, there's this common saying that uh, faith is really, you know, uh, uh, beginning to take the first step even before you literally see the staircase and for us that is the kind of thing that has been because uh, wherever you are at any particular point when you are involved with doing certain things as long as you focus on achieving the best that is possible and then you make a big difference in terms of the common goal then you really achieve big success. upon one's convictions while others wait, to create a positive force in a world where cynics abound. What kind of picture does it paint to you? Is it a picture that, that worries you? This uninhabited To provide island. information to people Just the latest when it wasn't available before. Imagine living in this camp and knowing that home is 20 kilometers away. Wherever you look, there is transition. To offer those who want it a choice. Who is most at risk? We'll be witnessing history in just a few minutes. For the people whose thirst for understanding and a better life, I dedicate the Cable News Network.